ACES is a powerful free color management pipeline that makes adding VFX to raw and log footage super easy for artists like you and me. In the previous video, we learned about color gamut and gamma. We'll be applying these concepts in this video as we dive into the ACES workflow in DaVinci Resolve and Blender. So join me and let's continue. So you can follow along, I've put together an ACES kickstart kit on Gumroad. It includes this clip of raw footage, this 360 degree HDRI of our scene, and the Blender file for this shot. The kit starts at $2, but you can pay more if you're feeling generous. Your purchase goes a long way in supporting the careful planning and quality that I try to bring to every tutorial. Your support is needed, and of course, very appreciated. Okay, first off, we'll get all the software set up properly. DaVinci Resolve is free, so download it. Next, you'll need to set up ACES in Blender. For that, I'm going to direct you to my friend Mario Casades, as he has a great video explaining how to do this. It's pretty simple, and with that, we're ready to roll. Inside Resolve, we'll create a new project. We'll head over to the Media tab and import our raw footage. Let's go to the Edit tab and drag this clip into the timeline. To get rid of these small black bars, we'll go into the Project Settings, Image Scaling, and click Scale Full Frame with Crop. We'll quickly switch to our Master Settings and make sure our resolution is set to 4K if you'd like to work in 4K. Then we'll head to the Color Management tab. Here we'll change our project color workspace to ACES CC. Once we hit save, we'll see that our footage looks different. This is because we've entered the ACES workspace. Don't worry about the picture looking bad. The first step in the ACES workflow is to transform the color gamut of our footage into the ACES 2065 color gamut. We also have to transform the gamma of our footage into the ACES 2065 linear gamma. ACES makes this conversion simple with what is called an input device transform. We'll call it an IDT for short. As part of ACES, there are tons of different IDTs to select from. Most of these IDTs are made for a specific camera and color profile. For scene referred footage, that is raw and log footage, there's often a custom IDT you can pick. But with display referred footage, there are fewer custom IDTs and rather some general ones that are less accurate. This is because display referred formats get rid of a lot of light information from the original scene, making the conversion into ACES less viable. With most raw footage, ACES automatically converts the raw data into the ACES 2065-1 color gamut and linear gamma. For log footage, we need to manually select an IDT. With this log clip here, I can either assign an IDT for the whole project in the Color Management tab, or I can right click each clip and select the IDT this way. The IDT is converting the color space of our log footage, Adobe RGB, to the ACES 2065-1 color space and the IDT is also converting the log gamma of our footage to be linear. The IDT is kind of like the great neutralizer of all different footage types. In theory, if we shoot footage of a scene on multiple different cameras with different color profiles, raw, log, and otherwise, the IDT should make these all look exactly the same. This is assuming that we have the same white balance and exposure for all cameras. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, back to Resolve. Right now, everything still looks bad, so let's go into the color management again, and we'll see this setting called Output Device Transform. Let's choose sRGB for now, and we'll hit Save. And now our footage looks good, or normal. Essentially, the Output Device Transform, or ODT, provides a way to convert from the huge color gamut and gamma of ACES 2065 to the color gamut and gamma of whatever display device we want to show or preview our work on. We're choosing sRGB since most computer screens use the sRGB color space and associated display gamma. To summarize, the ACES IDT and ODT help us easily enter and exit the ACES workflow. Now we can head to the color tab and at this point we can do any needed color correction. But be very careful, most color operations will destroy our linear light information. At this stage, we just want the white balance and exposure to look correct. So changes to the color temperature, this exposure slider, the offset wheel, and the gain wheel are all safe. Avoid any other changes. I left the color for this clip untouched. And with that, we're ready to export our footage. But before we do so, we need to disable the ODT. This will ensure that we're exporting our footage in the ACES 2065 color space and not sRGB. 
Again, don't worry about the footage looking bad. We'll go into Resolve's export tab and make sure that the in and out points are set to our desired clip. Then we'll select EXR for the format and RGB half for the codec. We use EXRs while working in ACES since this is the only file type that can store all the information for the ACES color space. This does result in larger file sizes, one downside of this workflow. So let's hit add to render queue and start render. If you want, you can set the ODT to sRGB and create an H.264 clip that you can use for camera tracking. For this shot, since it's not moving, I just used the free program FSpy to line up my camera's perspective and then I brought that camera into Blender. Now we're ready to jump into Blender. If you set up your workspace correctly following Mario's tutorial, you should see ACES listed as the display device in the color management tab. Make sure your view transform is set to sRGB and your sequencer to ACES CG. ACES CG is a linear color space with a slightly smaller gamut than ACES 2065, and it's used for CG rendering. We have our camera lined up here, and in the camera tab, we'll import the EXR sequence we exported from Resolve. This color space setting we can think of as the IDT, and we'll set it to ACES 2065-1, since this is the color space we exported from Resolve. Now, the footage in Blender should look similar to how it did in Resolve, with the sRGB ODT selected. For me, it's not a perfect match, but you'll see in the end it winds up matching. Let's now add some objects. For the scene geometry, all we need is a plane for the floor. We'll give it a material to very roughly match the wood's roughness and color. Then I also added a monkey object and these two balls. Obviously, you can probably add something more exciting. For accurate lighting and reflections, I created this 360 degree HDRI. We'll bring it in by going to the shader editor, selecting the world shader, and adding an environment input and selecting the HDR file. There is one important thing that's different at this point with ACES. Any outside images we use, from say an HDRI to an image texture, will need to be converted into the ACES color space in order to look correct. This again is done by using the IDT, which can be selected using this color space option on the node. I won't go into full details as Mario Casares has another awesome video dedicated to this topic which I'll link in the description. I know the color space my 360 camera uses is sRGB, and all HDRIs have a linear scene referred gamma. So I click this color space dropdown and I'll look for the utility linear sRGB input transform. You may need to zoom out the node graph and go back into the menu for it to show up. Hopefully you can find it, it's probably pretty small. Now we need to rotate our HDRI to be aligned properly. So I'll click this image node and hit Control T to create these mapping nodes. Go to the render properties and under film, we'll disable transparent. If we enter the rendered view, we can now see the HDRI. And I can change this Z value to rotate it into correct alignment. Now let's create some different collections to organize the objects in our scene. We'll have a collection for our camera, another collection for our floor, and one for any added objects. Finally, for our floor, we'll go into the object tab and set it to be a shadow catcher. We'll now set up some render layers so we can render the objects separately from their shadows. We'll name this current layer main objects. Let's set the floor collection to indirect only. You can see this makes it so that our floor shows only indirectly in the main objects. Then we'll create another render layer naming it shadows. We'll set the main objects collection to indirect only so we only see the shadows. Once we have our render layer set up, we'll make sure our background is set to transparent and set the output type to OpenEXR multi-layer and we'll hit render animation. For compositing, we'll create a separate scene and go into the compositing tab, make sure use nodes and backdrop are enabled. And make sure you have a viewer node and composite node to start out. Next, we'll bring in our background footage, which is the EXR sequence from Resolve. Remember to set the color space to ACES 2065-1. Then we'll bring in our CG render layers. For our CG elements, we'll set the color space to ACES CG 
Since we used Aces CG for rendering, let's quickly make sure the scene is set to the correct 4K resolution. We'll add the shadows by selecting the shadow view layer, adding an alpha over node, and putting our background footage in the top slot and shadows in the bottom. Then we'll do the same thing for our main objects by duplicating this render layer node, selecting the main object layer, and adding an alpha over node with our composite in top and objects in the bottom. Make sure the final composite goes into the composite node, and there we go. Now to export this, we need to create a camera in this scene and set the renderer to Eevee with one sample. This is just a weird workaround that allows us to render just this composite graph. Set an output type of OpenEXR and we'll hit Render Animation. Back in Resolve, we'll import this final EXR sequence. We'll right click it and set an IDT of ACES CG. Now we can enable the sRGB ODT to preview our final composite. If we compare this to our original footage, you should see that the colors are the same, just the VFX is added of course. From here, you can use Resolve's powerful color grading tools. Since we only used EXR files for this workflow, we retain all the light information from the original raw footage. So if I bring down my gain slider here, you'll see I still have all that light information outside the window. And you can also see the incredible dynamic range in the highlight of our mirror ball. If I had used PNG instead of EXR, these highlights would be clipped and the detail lost. And in this robot clip, for example, you can see just how much sky detail I can bring in with some adjustments. Now, when you're done with coloring, you're ready for a final export. We'll make sure the ODT is set for the correct display device, which will most often be sRGB for computer screens. But you could just as easily export for a movie theater projector by selecting P3 DCI. Pretty cool. We'll create an H.264 file for our final render. Hit add to render queue and render that sucker out. And there you go, you have gone through the complete ACES workflow. Pat yourself on the back, great work. If this tutorial was of some value to you, go over and grab that ACES Kickstart kit. Uh, maybe think of it as buying me a, a cup of coffee so that we can continue to make cool stuff like this together. Thank you again to Mario Casades and Daniel Brilka for sharing their wealth of knowledge on this workflow so that I could get it correct for you all. And thank you for watching, seriously. I'm glad to have you here and I'll see you in the next video.